Hello, good morning. Welcome back to another video, to another day, and to another plastering experiment. So it's been one day since I was in the laundry room doing the float coat experiments with the hemp plaster and the sand and lime plaster. Yesterday I was editing that video, so it hasn't gone out by the time I'm recording this, so there may be some comments that we got from the previous one that we'll have to address in a separate video. So we'll probably bundle all of that together if we need to do a follow-up. But today we're going to be experimenting with some top coat plaster. So join me in my builder's yard where we have many sands, some gravel and some rocks. Yesterday, after a long day of editing, I went out to pick up some sand, some fine sand or white sand as they call it here in Portugal. Because as we saw in the previous experiment, this stuff, which is known as uh, river sand, it's quite a sharp sand, quite a coarse sand. Uh, I used that in the float coat and A, there was a bit too much sand in the mix, but B, it ended up being quite grainy and gritty. So, over here, this is white sand. It's very, very fine and uh, slightly more expensive than the other stuff. This is 18 euros 50 for a half a cubic metre, which is all I can fit in my pickup truck. And this one is 12.50. So slightly more expensive, but I think it's gonna go further because this top coat goes on very, very thin and uh, apparently a little goes a long way. Or at least that's what I've heard and read. So, I'm gonna grab some sand, mix up a batch and see how things progress. So we're gonna be mixing up a batch of this top coat uh, and the mix can vary from about one to one to one and a half to one. So that's one part putty to one part sand or one and a half part sand. So I'm gonna start with one because then I can add more if I need to. Very, very difficult to take away. But actually the first thing I'm gonna experiment with is the amount of water to add to my hydrated lime to make the putty. So I'm getting a lot of my mix ratios from a book which is all about lime plasters and renders and paints, lime and clay, I think. I can't remember the title, but I'll put a link in the description. It's very, very good. It's got lots of good information. Unfortunately, nothing about hemp, which is a shame. Um, but all of the mix ratios in that book uh, start with lime as putty rather than as a powder. So in the past, we've taken quick lime and slaked it into putty. We've hot mixed quick lime with sand to make a mortar. Um, but the method that we're using now because it's kind of the easiest and safest and most flexible is using hydrated lime powder and adding water to it to kind of mix it up into a putty-like consistency. But when the book says one lime putty to one sand for our top coat, I need to work out how many buckets of hydrated lime powder that is to how much water to make up a bucket of putty. So the reason that I think that this one bucket of lime powder, hydrated lime, is not gonna make one bucket of putty is because it's a very, very uh, light material. It's not very dense. Uh, it's very f light and fluffy and powdery. So I'm gonna slowly but surely add a little bit of water into this. And if my theory is correct, some of this bucket of water will go into some of this bucket of lime and it won't overflow. It will just kind of turn it into a pasty-like substance. That's my theory anyway. Uh, so this is a uh, Greek yogurt container, which I think is exactly the kind of consistency that I'm gonna be going for, like a thick Greek yogurt. It is funny that I always end up with food references for building related material. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I just poured that straight in. It kind of rose up a little bit, but it hasn't overflowed by one yogurt container's worth. So there's the, the level of the bucket. It's dropped by almost six centimeters. What are you doing? Science. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
So there we go, that was one bucket of hydrated lime powder. I added somewhere between a third and a half of a bucket of water, the same size bucket. And we have ended up with maybe two thirds of a bucket of putty. And there may be some stuff that's unmixed at the bottom. I may have whipped in a bit of air whilst mixing. But one thing is for sure, one bucket of powder does not equal one bucket of putty. And that's probably why my mixing was off when I did the float coat. what it looks like, Greek yoghurt. That looks very nice. It almost looks like a quenelle of mushroom mousse. And it still sticks nicely which is encouraging. Now I'm quite excited. <laughs> Such a geek. So let's just catch up on a couple of things from the last video. Something that I did film but forgot to include in the edit for some reason was uh, using a devil float on this wall, which was the lime and sand experiment that we did. So this is the devil float. It's exactly the same float as my wooden float, but I put some screws in the end and at the moment they're retracted so the points aren't sticking through. But when you want to kind of scratch up the float coat, just screw these in two or three millimeters and it gives a nice key for this final coat, the top coat. So I did that, but for some reason didn't include it in the video. I probably got lots of comments about it, but I did do it. Um, what else? Um, something that I did also do last time was spray down the wall a few times as I went doing the uh, the float coat, but I don't think I sprayed it down enough or I think it had kind of absorbed everything by the time I was getting to some of the plastering. So the first thing I did this morning before I did anything at all uh, was come and soak this wall down with the sprayer and I've just had another go over the first area that I'm going to put the top coat on. So enough talking, let's do some working. Ooh, look at that. That is so much nicer than what I was doing the other day. Cool. So what's funny is this feels like what I thought all plastering would feel like. Quite smooth, quite easy to push around, uh, goes on really nicely. And I think when I sponge it off and uh, get rid of some of these trowel marks, I think it might look quite nice.
and it's a lovely material to work with and uh, yes there are still quite a lot of trowel marks and some inconsistencies I think I'm going to be able to get most of those out with the sponge float one thing that is very tricky to do on all of the coats is to get into the um, the corners of the room particularly up in the top corners because I'm reaching a bit but I have an idea for how I might be able to fix some of that so I'm going to let this kind of pull in a little bit and kind of absorb some of the moisture in the plaster. I don't know how long that's going to take. I'm just going to keep testing it with my knuckle. Apparently if you can barely see an indent with the knuckle, it's wet enough or green enough or dry enough or something to uh, move on to the next step. And sometimes with these top coats, it's actually done in two layers. The first one being about two mil thick, the last one being about one mil thick. Now, we're not going for a super fine, super fancy uh, finish in here or in any of the rooms, quite frankly. So I'm thinking that I can probably just do this coat, which was probably three mil thick in some of the thicker parts, and, uh, and then just finish it up with a float and maybe with a sponge. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna have a look at these corners and see if I can uh, improve some of that. So you see these slight inconsistencies in the corner. I'm hoping that with a wet brush, yeah, look at that. I mean, obviously I've got this wall still to do and I'll have to blend them at that time as well. That seems to be working quite well. Well, the brush technique worked a treat. This gives me high hopes for what the sponge float can do to fix some of my <laughs> trowel skills or lack of trowel skills. But I'm quite pleased with how this has gone on and it's only 12 o'clock, which means I think I'm gonna do the other wall as well. And hopefully I'll have enough time to do that and uh, see if we do a second top coat over there. You've seen me do one, so the next one is gonna be largely the same. Maybe we'll do a time lapse and uh, you can sit back and enjoy. So that's the second wall plastered. Very, uh, very pleased indeed. And uh, I can definitely already, just with a couple of days of this and two walls, I can feel like I'm improving. I've got more control. I, mean, I still don't have much control, but I have more control than when I started. And I think this wall has a lot fewer uh, trowel marks and scuff marks and stuff like that. There are still some, but I'm hopeful that the uh, sponge float will get those out. Still need to do the corners with the paintbrush and the water just to tidy those up. And I think before I jump straight into doing a second top coat on here, because I haven't got that much material left, I wanna see what the finish of the first wall is like. So I'm gonna get the sponge out and uh, take a look at that because why make more work for myself than I need to? Yeah, happy with that. Uh, for finishing this coat, it's just a sponge float. And then I think optionally I can go over it with a softer sponge to get a textured look or a wet steel trowel to get a polished look. Now this is a very rural, very rustic Portuguese farmhouse that we're restoring. So I think the slightly textured look is probably more appropriate than the uh, polished flat look. 
particularly because these walls aren't straight. But they have some wonderful rustic charm. Anyway, I'm going to try out the sponge float in this area so it's easy for me to work and hopefully easy for you to see. And um, we will take it from there. Just really light pressure and trying to pick up some of these high points and move it into some of the low points. That's kind of cool. Oh, I actually think more water is better rather than more scrubbing. Or at least I like the look of that better. Okay, so if we see this area here, it's quite rough where my trowel was not doing a great job, or where I was not doing a great job with my trowel. But now it's gone. <laughs> Cool. So that is looking pretty good. And it is a little rough still, but when it's got a few coats of lime wash over the top or a clay paint or something like that, I think it will be quite nice. Okay, I'm gonna call this finished. I went all over it with the sponge float and then I couldn't resist. I had a go with the steel float, but I uh, forgot to film it, sorry. It's definitely given a nice, hard, smooth surface. When you use the sponge float, you see some of those kind of textured, swirly, spongy marks where it's raised some of the sand and, and taken off some of the lime and also brought some of the lime to the surface in some places. So I think the smoother finish looks nicer, at least to me. Um, it's quite difficult to describe the difference between smooth and flat because this wall is not flat at all. It undulates in all sorts of different places, but it is now smooth and uh, I think it looks great. So now we just need to see if it passes the test. Are you ready for me? I'm ready for your opinion. Not this one. Oh. The one there. Oh, that's better than before, isn't it? Such praise. <laughs> Is that the previous coat? I think so, through? yes. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise it's nice, huh? Yeah. That's better than the, uh, the texture finish. And it's got another coat to go on. So that is the decision to be made. Um, so this has got the, f the first of the top coats. So this wall it's going to have all units here. Yes, I've been, uh, I've not told everybody that because then they'll be like, what, why are you putting in so much effort if it's going to be hidden? Practice. Practice is right. So that will be exposed. Yeah. The pocket door will be here. Yep. Yeah. So probably good enough, hey? I'm quite happy with that. Has it been sponged as well as...? It's been sponged and troweled. Lucky wall. <laughs> Would you like a sponging and a troweling, my love? <laughs> Not right now, thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, huh? First time plastering. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Well done. Sorry, I didn't quite hear you. Well done. Good job. <laughs> All the things that make you feel proud of yourself. That's right. Um, have a look at the wall behind me. I just need to adjust myself here. And so, coverage. but this is what the other wall looked like before I sponged it and troweled uh -huh. it. But this, I did a better job on this one because it was my second wall. My suggestion would be to do another coat to practice, to see what it looks like after two coats. Okay. Because at the moment we've got two walls that have both had a coat. Yeah. But okay, so I won't sponge it and float and trowel it because that would be a finishing type ah, activity. Okay. So yeah, I'll just so go straight over the top with another coat. Do you have coat. time to take it to get that on? I think so. I need to mix up some more, but I'll just do a slightly smaller mix. I think that's a good idea just to see what we think of the 
second coat how much better it is than this coat. That okay. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I'll see what I can do. So I decided I would sponge float this first just to get out some of the imperfections because the final, final top coat is going to go on like one mil thick if I can manage that. So uh, I'm going to try and smooth out some of the undulations first. Well, there we go. Two walls plastered, two top coats in one day. And I'm quite pleased with the result. This one behind me in particular, I think is really nice. Very smooth, undulating, but smooth. A couple of things to note whilst they're fresh in mind. Um, I don't know if you noticed on the time-lapse, but when I was putting on the second coat on top of the first top coat, it was really, really difficult to see where I'd done before and where I was doing next because the, the colour of the material was so similar. So that was tricky. Um, it was also quite tricky to put it on one mil thick, partly because I don't really have the skill of judging how much material is going on in any one place, um, but also because the walls are quite wavy and undulating, uh, it's really difficult to, to trowel it on uh, without it being thick in one place and thin uh, in another. But I definitely think that the second top coat has made a difference. Of course, the, uh, the proof is in the pudding. The day is getting on a bit and it's uh, even darker in this small room than usual. So I think it's only fair to do the final judgment tomorrow morning in uh, slightly better lighting conditions. We'll get Kylie's opinion and hopefully this is good enough for a laundry room. You here to inspect my work? Looks good from here. You mean from a distance? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's nice, huh? Good job. Even behind here. Oh, yeah, it's not as good behind the pipes, yeah. but you know the, <laughs> the cabinets there. Yeah, it's much better than the last coat. Better coverage. Yeah. Look at the difference in colour already as well. Yeah, yeah. when you think that what we started with is on that wall behind you, mm. and now this is what we've got mm. with a couple of extra coats. There's a couple of rough patches, but... There are, yeah. And there's, sand those down. there's some issues in the corners where it's really hard to kind of get in and mm. do, uh, do a good job. But when you do the other coat, then you can kind of run it down with the end of yeah. a paintbrush or something. Yeah, that's exactly what I did before. Yeah. Does it pass the test? It passes the test. I mean, like we've said, we're not going for perfect. We're going for... Done. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but also... Rustic. You know, rustic. Wow, first almost finished wall in the house. Almost. Yeah, it just needs like six coats of lime wash. <laughs> I mean, it's much better than that wall. 
Yeah, right? Yeah. So even from one wall to another, yeah. it's massively improved. Yeah. It really changes the light in here. So this reflects light much more than this, interestingly. Well, this, this will reflect when it's painted. Yeah, okay. Crack on, you got more to do. Yes, this is uh, somewhat of a bittersweet moment. It is very, very satisfying to have something which is almost finished, or it's at least the finished layer in part of this house. But it's two walls out of four in this room. And then there's all the other rooms downstairs and all the other rooms upstairs as well. So you may be able to tell in my voice, I'm a little <laughs> tired today. And it may have something to do with the perhaps premature small celebration I had last night. <laughs> but it is a pretty, uh, pretty exhausting process. Lots of material, lots of physical moving it around the wall. But I think it's definitely worth it. I'm really pleased with the way it's come out. And it can only get better from here, which is uh, also pretty exciting. And then by the time I finish the house, I'll probably be pretty good at it and then never have to do it ever again. <laughs> but that is it for now. Thank you for joining us for this uh, plastering experiment. I think we're going to be moving on to something completely different next week. In fact, do we want to show a sneak peek? Oh, yeah, sure. Something quite exciting has happened. Not that one. Not that one. Yeehaw! Wow. Fancy. Thank you very much. So yes, it's very exciting. The long-awaited underfloor heating parts have arrived. So next week we're going to be starting the install of that, which is very exciting indeed. But that is it for this video. Thank you for joining us. We will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye.